In this video, we'll look at some features of the Sketch menu. Click on Sketch and notice all the options here. And some of these options have sub-options. Some of them have tool tips also that teach you a bit about it. I'm going to click on Circle, Center Diameter, and the first thing I have to do is choose a plane to place the circle on. I'll choose the horizontal plane. I click on the horizontal plane, click where I want the center of the circle to be, and then click or type a diameter. And then hit Enter. Notice this and this. Those are constraints. A constraint is a feature that forces the sketch to behave in a certain way. Over here on the sketch palette, if you click it open, you'll see a legend of all the different constraints that there are. To remove a constraint, you need to select it, right-click, and hit delete. There's often a constraint here when you sketch something at the origin. So if a sketch doesn't do what you need it to do, it's often because there's a constraint there and you need to delete it as well. I'm going to add another sketch to this. I'll make a rectangle and I'm going to overlap it on the circle. You can see more constraints. These force these edges to remain parallel to each other. And let's make another sketch, an ellipse. Now I'm going to click Stop Sketch. Any new sketches I make will be on a different sketch plane. This is significant because sketches that are on the same sketch plane will interact in a way that sketches that are not on the same sketch plane won't. For example, all of these sketches are on the same sketch plane. I'm going to draw another one that isn't. And I'm just going to click here and then stop the sketch. Now if I want to edit any of these sketches, for example, if I want to trim the overlap, I'll click Trim and then I'll select a sketch and that way I can trim any of these overlapping parts. If they weren't on the same sketch plane, I couldn't do this. Now I think I'll select it, right click, press pull, and pull it up. Then click OK. Notice that the sketch underneath this body has disappeared. Here it is, and if I want to turn it back on, I'll just click that light bulb, and you can see it faintly in there. But notice that this sketch, which is on a different plane, did not disappear. Any sketch that is on the same plane as this will disappear as soon as I turn one of them into a solid, or a body, as it's called in Fusion. And to turn the sketches back on, I have to find them here in the browser, where I can turn them on and off. To delete all of this, I have a couple of options. If I hold my cursor down in the upper left corner and drag it, I'll have a selection window which highlights everything inside it and then I can hit delete. 
If I drag my cursor from the lower right to the upper left, I have a crossing window and it will select everything that merely touches it. So either one of those options is useful in different circumstances. Now I'm going to hit delete and this wasn't in the crossing window so I'll just select it and delete it. Let's look at how to mirror a sketch now. I'll draw a circle again and then I need to draw a line along which to mirror it. And press enter to end. Now I'm in an active sketch so at this point I can go to sketch mirror select the object select the mirror line and then click OK. Let's undo. What would happen if I was out of the sketch and then I wanted to mirror this? That is, if I did some work elsewhere and came back to it. Well, if I click on sketch, I can see mirror is grayed out. So what I have to do is select this, right click, and choose edit sketch. And that puts me back in edit mode. And now I can click mirror, select this, and it mirrors. And this is basically how the sketch function works.